Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose of this channel is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. So today I'm going to have a conversation channel where I just chat. So I know sometimes it's hard to discern between whether I'm speaking or our guest is speaking, but that's just the way I, I channel. That's just the way I'm psychic. So that's how it's going to be today. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so um, I wanted to ask specifically a few celebrities about what it's like to be famous. And specific, the specific question is, how do you deal with haters? Like, how do you deal with all the criticism that you get? And, and just you just get hammered and nailed by that. So I'd like to interview a couple today in the channel discussion, a panel, if you will. And the reason why this happened was because yesterday I was thinking about um, at Above Life Channel, I um, have been getting a lot of comments, which I really do appreciate. Thank you for commenting. That's great. I try to read them as much as I can, but I recognize as the channel's growing, it's going to be harder for me to keep up with everybody's comments. So just because I don't comment back doesn't mean I don't read them and thank you for them. Um, I do appreciate that. But I've had some uh, feedback that isn't positive, which is, co which is common on YouTube, I'm sure, and social media. But I was just like, wow, that's like, how do people get so um, up in arms, you know? It's, it it kind of surprises me, like, why would you even comment that if you're so, if you don't approve of something, why would you even waste your time? But, so I don't really understand that. Like, I'm trying to come to terms with some of that a little bit. Um, and so I thought, I, I need to talk. Who should I talk to about this? Who would have the best advice? Well, dead people people that I've been talking to who are famous, who've had, you know, pe attention given to them, you know? And so how do they manage that? So the first person that came through was Robin Williams. So I'm gonna welcome him today and step forward. He's here, he's like, <laughs> he has a Hawaiian shirt on. <laughs> he's got a Hawaiian shirt and flip flops on. <laughs> and one of those hats like a, um, I can't think of what you call them, but those are <laughs> that's cute. Okay, all right. Uh, casual, did I interrupt your um, your Hawaiian vacation in the afterlife or something? He's like, oh, no, no. He's like, he's like, it's a message, Bridget. It's a message. Do you, do you interpret the message by my fashion choice? I'm like, yes, I do. And I do. I do pay attention to what spirit is wearing. Thank you, because I'm clairvoyant. Clairvoyant means the psychic gift of sight, which means I see, that's how I get information. That's my primary source, is that. So that's the first place I go, is visual. And so, yes, so he's saying, well, what does it mean to you, Bridget? <laughs> like, well, seeing you like that, it means lighthearted. Like, relax. Like, hey, you know, no problem, like just, you know, go with the flow. Don't, you know, don't be stressing. Just like vacation, just let it go kind of thing. Is, you know, lighthearted, like take it. You don't have to take it. And so he was the first person that came in. He just popped into my head yesterday. When I was thinking about this, I thought, how do these celebrities do this? And I've always had a deep respect, you guys for celebrities and how intense their lives must be. And I do not envy that. And I've been really clear about that. I, I just feel so much, um, I feel compassion, empathy for them because their lives are not their own. Like pe public, people in the general public, public doesn't mean everybody, not everybody's like that, but some general public kind of fans and stuff feel like they own them, like they have access to them just because they're famous and that's not, that's not real, you guys, but that's such a, a fact of their lives. So I just have such a, I just feel for them, you know? And so Robin, the first thing that he, he popped in, that's what gave me the idea to do this video. He popped in and he said, um, people are gonna love you. The people that love you, how did you say this yesterday? Can you repeat it? Love the people that love you is what he said. He said, love the people that love you. He said, people are gonna love you and people are gonna hate you. Love the ones that love you. That's what he said, yeah. People are gonna love you and people are gonna hate you. Love the ones that love you, he said. 
Okay, so for those that love the channel, mwah, thank you. <laughs> for those that don't, I do not understand why you guys are watching. <laughs> but hey, if, if that's uh, okay, whatever. I don't understand, but that's all right. All right, so um, ah, thank you. All right, so Robin, can you talk a little bit about Okay, he says, well, you can interview the other guests. Yes, okay, so the second person that came in was George Michael. He popped in. Now, these are some of the favorite guys that I like to interview in the afterlife, that I have a few audios and or a few videos, and then some of them in the videos, I actually, in the description, read the descriptions, people, because where it says click more, because sometimes I click and I share an audio from the past that I've done, because I've channeled and I've done audios as well, not just video. So check that, but uh, George Michael, <laughs> he popped in and he's like, he kind of has this side profile with this like scruffy face and his hair was really short and his glasses on um, later in his life, you know, and he, I just saw his side profile and he's like, yeah, I know all about haters. <laughs> he says, really, really? He's like, you get a few comments and you're like, oh, how do I handle this? And he's like, Re really? Like, just ask me. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay. So he was just kind of like, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. People can, and basically what he said was people can be mean. I mean, and that's, is that the sentiment as well? So let's say, welcome George Michael. And so I'm trying to, sorry if this is confusing. I'm trying to recall what they said yesterday and then just a little bit and then today. So, George Michael, welcome. And he leans forward to give me a kiss on the cheek. I love you. I love you too. He's so sweet. Oh my God, he's so sweet. Robin Williams is funny and, and stuff and, and sweet and genuine. A little more serious though. Robin is more serious. I got to be honest. He's much more philosophical and reflective and just like wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom from the beyond. <laughs> he's being funny. Now he looks like the genie in Aladdin. And he was in the movie Aladdin, which I love. I love Robin. Oh my gosh. He put the turban on. He's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need three wishes, Robin. We need three wishes. Okay. All right. So thanks, George, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And he says, you know, there's really not much I can say. People are, people can be very mean. People can be very mean. And it, and it does hurt. He says, this is George. He's saying people can be very mean and it does hurt. That's what George is saying. People can be mean and, and it does hurt. Yeah, and you got just nailed. I mean, I mean, and both of you too, criticism and, well, Robin, you were very beloved. So, um, but your personal struggles were very public at times, you know. Um, I shouldn't say we're very public. Your ups and downs, I think, were... Um, I don't want to say hidden because they because they weren't hidden I, um, but I think the expectations of you Robin were of a high standard a high caliber and I think more of a mentor teacher and that role I feel like you fit really really well not even as a comedian like I don't have any I think Maybe did you, okay, so he's kind of, okay, we're having like this dialogue, which is going to be tricky for you to follow, but just kind of stay with me. So at times you felt, did you feel typecast as a comedian? Let me ask you that. Did you feel typecast? Because once you're a funny person, once you're a funny person, a funny man, you know, once you're a comedian, you're always a comedian. And he says, uh, it doesn't stop. You don't stop. That's part of who you are. Just how you, you know how you talk about, you know, being a psychic and walking through the grocery store and zooming in on people and, you know. Yeah, it's part of who you are, being, being a comedian. But that, and it's fun. You can play with it. You can, you know, you can have a good time with it. But you have to have breaks. There has to be a time when you can just be a regular guy. And your friends understand that, especially fellow comedians, you can just be a regular guy. But that's where criticism comes in, Bridget. That's where criticism comes in. It sneaks in, that's what he's saying to me. Um, is the hardest critic, oh, Robin, you're brilliant. Robin is brilliant with his advice. I'm telling you, teacher, mentor, great. His advice is. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. 
you are your own worst critic. Don't you be a hater of you. Don't you don't hate yourself. I don't hate myself. I have a, I think I have a pretty good uh, self esteem. But gosh, once you start to get bigger, like more people notice you your videos and they comment on them. Like they're commenting on my videos now. There's some really mean people that say mean things, and I. It just feels negative, like negative energy, you know, coming at you. And for me, I have to just shield the negative energy. I don't really take it personally. I don't feel like I take it personally. I feel like I have a pretty good self-esteem. I have a very strong self-awareness of who I am and, and what I want to do in the world and what sharing channeling is really important to me. I love it. I just love it. It feels good. Like it's who I am, you know? I'm a channel. My name is Bridget. Hello. If you knew my last name, some of you do, you would know it totally relates to. Anyway, so um, I feel like I have a pretty decent self, you know, worth, but I also am very aware that I am a part of myself. I have high expectations and high standards. I want to be accurate. And when I'm not accurate or I get something wrong or I misinterpret something that I see, remember you guys, I'm clairvoyant, so I see first. That's my first channel. That's why I describe so much about the spirit and what they look like and how they're sitting and what, you know, where they're at because they show up at different stages in their lives. Like with Robin, when he just did a costume change. I mean, that's important information because you get the feeling. To me, it's all about the feeling, the vibration, the energy. That's what inspires people and gives them hope is this. You know, but I, I agree the criticism is just natural, but when it, we are criticizing ourselves, that's the worst. That is sabotaging. And I'm not, I'm not at the point where I'm doing that, but I, I, I don't feel like that. But I will say, and I think that George can probably relate, George Michael, you could probably relate to this. He's like, oh, oh, what? now you're talking to me? Oh, now you're talking to me? Robin's gonna let me talk now? He's like, oh, now you're talking to me? <laughs> He's just listening. <laughs> He's so sweet, you guys. George Michael, so sweet. <laughs> He's so sweet. He's like, where's your tea? He says, where's your tea? I don't have tea. I just have water, my water. He's like, oh, that's good for you. <laughs> hmm. But so, so Robin, or I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Robin, for that insight about don't hate yourself. Don't criticize yourself, you're your own worst critic, because that's true for a lot of us, right? We learn how to judge ourselves early on. Oh, wish I could just take that program right out of there and just smash that SD card for that. Ugh. But we all do it, it's natural. So, okay, so George, I wanna talk to you about this a little bit. I feel like the this is another piece that I want, and I want to talk to you specifically because I feel like you will totally get this. I feel like for me, in doing this channel, in sharing these videos, for me, my biggest fear or the piece of it that's not appealing to me in sharing this on YouTube and doing this public like this is the piece that's not appealing to me is that... From what I've seen, people who get attention and become known for their skills or their gifts are also the people that get the most um, pressure to perform, stress upon them, unrealistic demands upon them. And I know I'm not putting the cart before the horse, you guys. I get that I'm not, I'm not famous or anything like that. But there is a fear that when you for me personally, with the YouTube channel, as it gains momentum, when I have videos that have a thousand views, two thousand views, whatever, I feel like, number one, it's a great opportunity to, to touch people, right? But also, it's, it's a little scary because I've already had, I've already had trouble with some um, disgruntled fans of mine or something getting upset by something I I've done or or talked about or something or I've had hate mail I've had a stalker already um and you know aside from like the internet like troll people and stuff I've had other things and so how like 
you were in the public eye, George. You were totally in the public eye. And then you like, it's like, seems like you kind of just stepped way away from that. You stepped way back from that. You withdrew kind of. Now, is that because of some of the personal stuff that came out about you and some of the, you know, paparazzi stuff and the, you know, stories about you and stuff like that? And, and how do you handle that? How did you handle that? I mean, is it worth it, you guys? Robin and George, is it worth being, f being known, being famous? Is it worth it to do what you love, to share your gifts with everybody, with everyone? Because you don't just get to share it with the people that you know will love it. You have to share it with everyone. And the critics and the people that are, are mean-spirited people that hate it also get to see it. And so how do you come to terms with that? Like, is it worth it, George? I mean, is it? Was it worth it? He says, I can't believe you're asking me that question. Of course it's worth it. Of course. Of course it was worth it. Had I not been a singer, I don't. I, I, I have to sing. I have to sing. And look at all the wonderful people I got to sing with, to be with, and all of the things I got to do because I had fame, because people knew who I was. I had more opportunity to help. I had more opportunity. You can use that in positive ways. And all the struggle that you go through, everybody goes through struggle, whether it's public in the public arena or, the, or in private life, everybody goes through struggle. Everybody has struggle. It's the way that you move through that, move beyond it, rise above it. And I will be the first to admit that I didn't do it very well myself. I didn't, it was difficult for me to rise above that. And so George, because you led a public life, but also tried to hold your private life back, and then all of a sudden it just like exploded, and specifically referring to you being gay and having to kind of also be a sex symbol for women. I mean, and now, now, you know, here where we are at this time, that would be like not an issue, no problem. But back in the 80s and 90s, that was like a thing, right? Like, that must have been very difficult for you. You know, is there was there conflict there? Or was it was it just a business decision that you made or because not being who you are publicly, and also balancing like a private life, you know, like, and Robin just leans forward and says, once you're a celebrity, there is no private life. There, there is no private life. There's no private life. He says, look at, look around you. Everything is public. Look at your social media feeds. Look at what people are posting. Look at what the young people are posting. Nothing is private. Everything is community. I'm not saying it's right. He says, I'm not saying it's right, but it's like public domain. And then George, George says, I tried to stay off of social media. <laughs> I tried to stay away from that and live a relatively normal life or try to live a normal life and was somewhat successful in that. I, was so, I feel I was somewhat successful in that. But to answer your question about my choice of partners, <laughs> my private life, my dating scene, that was hard. I had a lot of pressure. There was definitely, there was most certainly well-meaning people that would not have understood had I chosen to just live publicly. Uh, as a gay man, as a gay person. And looking back, I think that was, that was just the way it was at that time. But I think it was a mistake. It was a mistake to try to tone down or be quiet about my love life. And I think that showed through. I think people could see through that. And I 
I don't know if it would have hurt my career if I would have come out fully, but I can see that for me as a person, it was part of the pain that I carried and part of what led to other choices in my life that weren't so positive. It is really tricky, I'm gonna tell you guys, and you can probably tell when I, if you watch my other George Michael channeling, it is tricky for me to translate him word for word. So I do use some of my words. Um, he kind of shares a feeling and he'll say a few things, but he doesn't like chat, 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 chat. You know, he doesn't get super chatty. Well, sometimes he does, I guess, one of the videos you did, but. Um, he says, we're just here to support you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you guys are so sweet. Oh, they're so nice. Okay, so I have one more celebrity in this panel that I need to ask about this. And I think I will just chat briefly with this person. And then I might have to do his own video because he likes to do that. We have nice long conversations, he and I. And it would be, <laughs> and Robin goes, prance. <laughs> it would be prance. And George just kind of goes, oh, hey, hey, and kind of leans back like, hey, to Prince acknowledges him and he says, hi, hello. And he leans over and Prince comes in, he shakes Robin's hand and shakes George Michael's hand and sits down, sits down. Um, George Michael has a little dog on his lap. I'm going to tell you that. I know that in a previous video that I channeled and I talked about his dog, somebody posted, I think, that he had like big dogs, but I see a little dog with him. I don't know if it's like his mom's dog or his friend's dog or somebody's dog that's in heaven, but there's a little dog on his lap. I'm just going to tell you that. Like a Yorkie or a little terrier or something. It's kind of fluffy, so it's cute. I'm just going to tell you that. So I don't know what he did in this human life, but in the afterlife, the little dogs are cute. He likes the little dogs. All right. So... Prince, I can feel Prince big time. In fact, I can hear there's like an adjustment and vibrationally in my ear. So Prince comes in. He says, ask me what you're gonna ask me. How did you handle fame, notoriety, attention, celebrityism? How did you handle celebrityism? That would be actually, did I just make up a word? That's a cool word, celebrityism. Um, Maybe that would be a cool thing for me to ask people in the afterlife interviews. How do they handle their celebrity? That's a good idea for follow-ups. Like when I ask, talk to uh, celebrities again. Oh, that's a good idea. So how did you handle the fame? He says, not very well. You think? How, what do you think? How do you think I handled my fame? Well, did I handle it well? Did I, do I get a grade for this? Do I get an A, a B, a C? Did I, do I get an F? Ah, that's a question, isn't it? That's a big question. So I want you to answer this, Prince, for me as a friend, knowing that the reason why I'm asking about it is because of haters, because of negative comments, and not because I'm worried about being personally attacked, but it just affects other people in the channel it affects and it affects me too energetically um, it won't ever stop me nobody else is going to uh, make decisions for me for what I'm going to do for my life's work but it still is a uh, it has a place in like social media especially on YouTube it seems like people can just like comment and there's like anonymity there and they just yeah I don't know it's kind of weird it, it really I don't wanna say it shocks me, but it's, I, I just, I would never do that. I would never, even if I disagreed with somebody or really didn't believe something they were saying, I would never like post on their channel. Why would I give them that attention? You know, I just would move along, move along. So, okay, so, so here's where I'm at. So how do you deal with the haters? How do you deal with that? Like you're a big celebrity, you were a huge celebrity. How did you handle that? You know, how did you handle that? He says, I, I have to agree with Robin. Prince says, I have to agree with Robin. The, the worst critic is yourself. The worst person, the, the person that's gonna judge you the most is you. I have to agree with him on that. You're gonna judge yourself. You're your own worst critic, as they say. That's true, that was true for me. I mean, just look at my vault. 
all these songs, all this music, uh, and I kind of ran out of time, didn't I? I would tell you, Bridget, do as much as you can while you are inspired to do it. While you can do it, do it, share it. Don't let anybody stop you from making your art. And you've said that before, that this is art, it's not you know, science, it's not, there's no formula for what you do, it's art. It's clearly art, what you do. Don't let anyone stop you from doing that. Do it as much as you can. Do it all the time. Share as much as you can. And the haters, dealing with the haters, just you got to pay them no mind. People are going to hate. Some people just have, some people are just angry. And they they spew their hatred all over and you just got to remember that are you really going to talk about that he says you got to remember really he's showing me god he's like god will judge them or i shouldn't say that i don't i don't believe that that in the judgment day and all that jet i don't believe that but he's like god will take care of them God has to take care of them just as God so like I use the word source creator but he's saying just as God takes care of you they have their own journey they have their own path they have their own they have their own lives and it's a sad life if you're angry all the time and you just all and all you have is time to just the time they're wasting telling you how awful you are or how bad you are, how not good you are, they're not using that time to do something good for themselves or productive for themselves. That is not productive time. Criticizing other people is not productive time. You got to keep that perspective and you got to just not care about that. You got to just not pay them no mind. (laughs) It's funny, you guys, because I got to be real honest. Like, I'm not super upset by the negative comments. I'm just not. I'm annoyed that they, I can't just delete, like, I, I'm annoyed that people do that and it clutters the feed. Like I just, for other people too, like it, it just taints the energy. It's like, it just dirties the water, you know? I'm like, ew, ew. So I wasn't sure how to handle it, if I should just delete negative comments or if I just leave them up there and have other people flag them and delete them or what to do. But right now I think I can manage it pretty well. It's pretty much in a way, the community on YouTube here at Above Life Channel, I'm able to kind of monitor um, a couple times a week, pop in and read stuff and delete stuff too and block users, which I do. I've already done that several times. Um, well, maybe not that much, actually a handful. Most of the comments are really good. Most of the people's energy vibes are great. And people have really, you guys have really good questions, things I would never think to ask. And I totally appreciate that. And so, uh, yeah, just a few naysayers can just, you know, bye-bye, you know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So just do keep doing what I'm doing, huh? All right. Hey, thanks for that. This bump. I'm like, fist bump. Prince is like, really? <laughs> All right. Okay, so thank you, Robin Williams. Thank you, George Michael. Thank you, Prince, for being a panel to discuss what it's like to be famous. Like, when you're a celebrity and you get criticism, what is it like to handle criticism? How do you handle that? How do you handle the haters? And so I appreciate the vi- advice, and I hope that you here at Above Life Channel have enjoyed this video and got some nuggets of wisdom for yourself again from Robin Williams, George Michael, and Prince in the afterlife. This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video if you do. If you have some comments about it, about some of the content here, go ahead and and post. If you have questions, you can post in the comments. Remember, I try to read them, so thank you for them. And um, if you never want to miss a weekly channel or a weekly video that I share, go ahead and click the red bell, the subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here.